John Orsini, Choices, Decisions, and Consequences. Choices, Decisions, and Consequences, John Orsini. Life is all about choices, decisions, and consequences. Some are serious, some are humorous, and some we have no clue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some examples of choices, decisions, and consequences. The first one I'd like to use is what I call the honeymoon's over choice. <laughs> Here's the scenario. Husband's been out playing golf all day. Comes home, plops down on the couch, turns on the sports channel. In the meantime, the wife's been out all day, soccer games, football, groceries, <laughs> cooking, and she asked the question, honey, do you want dinner? Clueless, what are my choices? <laughs> Your choice is yes or no. <laughs> the second one is the clued in husband. The honeymoon is still on, but we all know the scenario. Honey. Do I look better in the black dress or the red dress? Smart husband thinks first about his choice, knowing what the consequence might be. Honey, you look beautiful no matter what you're wearing. You're off the hook, guys. But then we have some serious consequences. Think about this. You're going to a party with Andrew Stacer. It's the end of the month. You have a choice. Are you going to be the designated driver, or are you going to be the designated drunk? <laughs> you're lucky. Andrew decides he's going to be the designated driver, or you're going to be the designated drunk. <laughs> so now you have some choices. Do I go out and party hardy? Do I enjoy the party? Do I sit and drink responsibly? Or do I get snockered? You choose the latter. Or possibly, nah, let's say you choose to be the drunk. You get home, Andrew's sick of you because I love you, boy. I love you, man. <laughs> get out of the car, cold air hits you, and all of a sudden you don't feel so good. Maybe that choice wasn't the best choice I could have had. So you immediately get into the house, you get up to the porcelain altar, you get down on your knees and you grab a hold and you start doing it. And the whole time you're doing it, you're praying to God, please. Please, I'll never drink again. Just let this get over with. But God has a sense of humor. <laughs> ah! He says, no, 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 no. You chose to go out and drink. You chose to go out there and get sick. So you're going to pay the consequences. You get to see what your lunch was. And you get to see what your dinner was. Over and over again. So you see, that's a serious consequence. But it's not as serious as if, as if you drove and got drunk and then drove home. Very serious. You might get lucky and get home without getting in trouble. You might have stopped by a police officer and thrown in jail. It's going to cost you anywhere from $3,000 to $3,500. That's if you don't have an accident. You may or may not get your license. He you will be suspended. You may get a license that will possibly be restricted so you can go to work and come back home every day. But that's a choice you make, and that's the consequence. But think about if you got an accident you hurt somebody or you killed somebody. The young lady that just got sent to prison for 18 years because she made the wrong choice. Her decision was she was going to go party hardy and guess what happened? She had an accident and killed four people. Now she's going to spend 18 years in prison. That's a little harsh. Now think about what I like to call the white noise slash the information technology. Back in Vietnam during the war, they were trying to ascertain why certain pilots weren't getting shot down and why these other pilots were getting knocked off within 20, 30 of their attempts going north. What they found out was smart guys were choosing to turn off a bunch of the radio frequencies and cut out the white noise. And what they were doing is they were listening to maybe three channels, the channel in their element, that they're flying in, the guard channel, and the channel that told them whether there were any other enemy planes in the area or possibly missiles. The pilots that were getting shot down had all of their radio frequencies on and were paying attention because of all the white noise. Now fast forward to today and technology. We have cell phones. We have TV. We 
we have the radio, we have Bluetooth, we're constantly bombarded by what I call the white noise. Everybody here has a cell phone, correct? We all have cell phones? How many of you have Facebook? How many are on LinkedIn? How many are on Twitter? Constantly bombarded, constantly bombarded. Can you imagine all the information you're trying to absorb and can't do? Now think if you're a buyer of a house or maybe a seller. A buyer has a decision today. Do I buy now? Will the property values go down? Because everything I'm hearing, the value's going down. But what about interest rates? Interest rates are going up, folks. The old saw is, when is the bottom over? The bottom was over six months ago. Trust me, I've seen the statistics. Now, you're the seller. You're getting bombarded by all this information. And you're thinking, my house is worth this. This is my choice. But my realtor is telling me, this is what your house is really going to sell for. So which way do you choose? What are the consequences? If you're up here and the market's here, and all of a sudden you start listening to your realtor, but in the meantime, you're chasing the market down because everybody's seen your house, they're no longer interested because it's over price. And finally, I like to call what I call the consequence that doesn't make any difference. How many of you know Yogi Berra? A great baseball player. Yogi had what we call yogiisms. And Yogi was great for giving you a piece of information or telling you something that to you would make no sense. But what he chose to tell you was made a lot of sense. An example I give was the time that somebody was going to come out to an interview at his house, and he was telling him how to get there. And he told the guy, when you get to the fork in the road, take it. <laughs> the guy said, what? He says, take it. Now, in Yogi's mind, he knew that no matter which choice you took, you would get to his house because the road went like this. <laughs> but to him, it made sense. So the guy said, well, which way do I go? He says, it doesn't matter if you'll get here. <laughs> so think about that. So what I'd like to conclude with is, we have choices to make in life. Do you choose the right choice, or do you choose the wrong choice? If you choose the right choice, you'll win every time. Mr. President.